all again Race them in the sand Buck them in the mud Drip a cowboy's sweat Bleed a cowboy's blood I'm Zeke Thurston, 2016 World Champion Saddlebrock Rider, and you're watching the Pepper Stewart Show. He told you that. I didn't. It wasn't me. It was that guy. But you did tune in again. Boredom has set in. You've burnt your eyes on everything you can on your streaming service, and you found it. But you didn't find it wrong. It's free. Worth every penny. Always worth every penny. <laughs> I'm here today. Daryl's here. Daryl's back. What's up? He's here, talking about stuff. We got a lot of stuff going on, or not. We're going to talk to uh, we're going to talk to Amanda Radke. Uh, those of you that have been following the show for years are familiar with her. We talk to her off and on whenever stuff's going on in the beef news. She's a great beef advocate. Mm -hmm. uh, she's with Beef Magazine. She's on top of stuff. Not only does she write about beef and stuff, they also raise cattle. Which helps out quite a bit. Which helps a lot. Yeah. yeah. She's on the ground floor with that. So we're going to talk to her. There's a, a lot of stuff's been going on in the news about beef and real beef and fake beef. And is it possible? Is it impossible? Do you want real meat? <laughs> fake Beyond meat. meat. And, and I, don't, I don't get that. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. And, you know, a lot of folks say, well, you know, we eat beef for health. It's for our health. Well, not really, because when you look at what all's in it, that's not healthy at all. No. Matter of fact, I think I read something the other day that um, some of the top on the line right now of Beyond Meat has the same ingredients that's in dog food. And, and not the good dog food. That's the bad thing about <laughs> and, it. And that's just about <laughs> right. And, you know, it's like I, you know, I, I deal with these all the time. You know, we, we've got some, some veganistic folks and vegetarian folks that, that we talk to and deal with every day. And, and it all comes to education. And if, if it's your... If it's your deal that you don't want to do a certain thing, then don't do it. Right. But you don't, you know, it's the same thing with whether eat meat or not eat meat. It's the same thing with religion. It's the same thing with trucks. You know, some people like Ford trucks. Some people like Chevy trucks. And they want to argue all the time, which is the best. You know, is, is there a Jesus? Is there not a Jesus? People argue about that all the time. It's just whatever your mindset is and, and your lifestyle choices where you're at, you know, where you grow up, where you're raised. You got people that are raised in the city all the time, have no clue about what goes on the farm. Exactly. People on the farm don't not real sure what goes on this in the city other than what they see on tv and on the news every day and it's just when i talk to these people and try to have a, a conversation it's just my point is be knowledgeable if you want to talk about something you want to protest something you want to argue about something whatever it is know what you're talking about because the argument doesn't go south any faster if somebody doesn't know what they're talking about, whether they're talking about what kind of meat they eat or what kind of rodeo they're watching. Because for years you had all this about uh, the flank straps on the bulls. You know, they're on their balls. No, they're not. If you, if, you, if you would do a little bit of research and look things up, you wouldn't, you know, your argument wouldn't be so invalid if you had a little bit of education and knew a little bit about what you're talking about. Right. Well, and that's where star power people that use their platform that they have to spew off whatever they think is the best for their followers or however when they're not educated to the point where they actually should be up there talking that's where all the misinformation comes around and it just takes one celebrity to get up there and spout off to 30 million viewers now yep. 30 many 30 million people are educated incorrectly about a subject it happens all the time mm -hmm. on on all avenues of life there's so much misinformation out there on the internet I, you know i tell people all the time do your own research look things up for yourself figure it out so that's what we're going to do we're talking to amanda here in a minute uh we got some pbr bull riding stuff happened we're going to tell you about that who won who didn't uh we got some odd news some great odd news for you a bunch might of goats make, might make you chuckle a bunch of goats goats.com don't go, don't google that don't 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 don't, 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 do please, that. don't, don't. it was a mistake and we got a TV show coming up, or not. We're not sure. It might, it may, or may not. We're going to do that, but what we're going to do right now is we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to have Amanda Radke on the line. Welcome back. And we did tell you we're going to talk about beef and stuff. And talking about beef and stuff, those of you who have been following for a while, 
have uh, seen Amanda on the show off and on talking about different hot topics and things going on in the beef community. And with that, we've got another hot topic that's been in the news here lately. If you've seen it, you may have not seen it. But we're gonna, we're going to do is bring Amanda on here and let her kind of tell you what's going on. Amanda, are you here? I'm here. What is going on in your world today? <laughs> well, I, I wasn't prepared to go viral, uh, but I think that's what's happening. I uh, wrote a letter to Ellen DeGeneres asking her if I could come on her show and talk about beef cattle. I had seen a, a video on Instagram that she had posted encouraging people to be neat and eat less meat. And so I just wanted to share with her fans the facts about, about beef production so they could make informed choices based on facts and not propaganda. And and that's the thing. That's kind of what we talk about is, you know, if, if you're going to make a decision, life choice or, or what, at least be educated on the, the full aspect of what's going on instead of just making a rash decision on, on something you saw on the Internet. Yes, and I mean, that's the, the hard thing is there's, you know, the Google and YouTube, um, you know, there's bloggers and activists. So many people are sharing our story for us and not really doing what we do in, in modern agriculture today justice. And so um, we're a quiet voice, but we have a great story to tell if only, you know, farmers and ranchers have that platform to share our story. Now, since this broke out and, and went you know, I, th I think I seen it a, a day or so ago. I saw it pop out and, and going everywhere on, on social media. Has there been any response from anybody in any of the bigger camps like that, say Ellen or Tonight Show or any of those folks, reach out to get the information? I sure wish, but no, it's been cricket so far from, from Ellen's crew, but we're going to keep trying. I think uh, by the end of the week I'll have probably done about 15 media interviews, both TV and radio and, and podcasts too, and uh, so I'm, I'm excited and humbled that my message resonated and people want to hear this information. Um, but we're going to keep working on Ellen, and, and hopefully we've gotten her attention even if she hasn't reached out yet. Now the question that everybody's wanting to know is that if you make it on Ellen, are you going to dance? <laughs> well, I promised I would, but boy, I'm going to need dancing lessons. Do you know anybody in the cowboy community who can help me out? I, I'm, I'm, I have no no assistance on that one so far. <laughs> it could be pretty bad, but by golly, I'll try. Uh, so, um, you know, I read today where you got a lot of backlash from folks, and and what is what does that look like for the for the folks that are just are not really understanding what your message is and kind of being negative towards you? Sure. Well, I guess, you know, if you haven't read the open letter yet, I think it's important to note that I wasn't, you know, attacking Ellen. I'm, I'm totally okay with her, you know, eating a plant-based diet um, because I believe in freedom of food choices, right, and not having, you know, someone else determine what's the best diet for me. Um, and so I would never want to do that to anybody else. Um, but like I said, my, my problem was really just the misinformation shared and it seems like I must have hit a nerve because I've been called everything from a psychopath to a serial killer to a bought and paid for lobbyist. Uh, my husband's receiving hate mail. Um, I've been made in Photoshop and this was pretty nasty meme. Um, and I don't, I don't say that to, you know, sound whiny or to, you know, have a pity party, but just um, people are definitely laying it on thick. And it's not just activists, but even people within the agricultural community that I didn't really like my approach or thought, you know, maybe I should just be quiet and not say anything because I'm ruffling feathers or something. So I guess you have to have tough skin to want to speak out like this, but I hope, you know, the hate mail that I've received doesn't discourage anyone else from, you know, standing up and sharing their story. Well, and, and a lot of times when you run across stuff like that, when, you know, you've got a lot of keyboard warriors out there and then you got people that a lot of times they, they don't, what if they don't fully understand they don't like you know if, if they don't like it and understand it you know then they'll they you know have a little issue but you know it's it's mainly your your keyboard warriors sitting in the basement watching tv eating pringles and just getting fired up and complaining about something they have no idea about or I, I totally agree I, and and i think you know i 
I know I'm never going to convince those people otherwise, so I really want to focus on the 95% of folks that just genuinely want to know, you know, more about their food and how it's produced. And so the big thing I want people to know is that the U.S. beef industry has one of the lowest carbon footprints in the world, 10 to 50 times lower than other nations. Uh, greenhouse gas emissions from cattle only account for 2% of total U.S. greenhouse gas emissions. And for comparison, uh, 25% comes from transportation and 29.7% from electricity. And so there's a lot of ways we can reduce our carbon footprint, and I think going meatless probably isn't one of the most effective ways to do that. <laughs> no, no, it's not, it's not going to work. And that's, and that's what I think is comical about a lot of the situations is, is you've got people that live in the city and in downtown and a concrete jungle telling people out in the in the farms and ranches how to live. Mm -hmm. Well, I say this kind of tongue in cheek, but you know, cows outnumber people people four to one in South Dakota and if if those emissions were so bad from the cattle we'd have some smog problems here and and I think we should enjoy some fresh air out here in South Dakota. Mm -hmm. So um, and, and I think it's important to point out that, you know, I, I think I, people have great intentions when they hear, you know, they can reduce their carbon footprint if they go meatless. Um, but if every American adopted just going meatless on Mondays, uh, it would only reduce greenhouse gas emissions by less than one half of one percent. Um, so I tell people if they truly want to make a diet change to impact the planet in a positive way, we need to focus on food waste. Because 40% of all food brought home in America goes on the end. And so we need to respect the harvest and, you know, utilize every single bite that we produce here in the United States. I think that has a big thing about it, this reducing the, the waste. There's mm -hmm. so much they give away that, uh, I think, what is it, like Panera Bread gives away all their bread every night that they don't sell. Mm -hmm. a, um, but yeah. you don't see a steakhouse giving away free T-bones, or I would be waiting at uh, Morton's. Or hey, I'd be in line for that, <laughs> I think. <laughs> no, I, I would keep doing what you're doing, you know, and I was once told by some people that if you're getting hate mail and you're getting memes made of you and stuff, that means you're making a, an impact because you're upsetting people, and when people get upset because you're not preaching to their choir, then they take it out on you. So as long as you're getting the hate mail and even the, the funny memes made about you and all that stuff, that means you're going in the right direction. It's when all that quits is when you got to worry. Yeah, I, I, well, I'm going to keep trying. And especially when I see you know, some of these politicians that are suggesting we need to have thin taxes on meat or we need to uh, ask producers for the emissions that they supposedly create on their ranches. Um, that kind of stuff really worries me. And so um, the fight for our freedom to farm and our freedom for food choices um, is, is really great. And I think we need every producer on board and involved in these discussions. And that, that right there is what will we'll get it done and keep everybody informed. And uh, I tell you what, Amanda, we appreciate you taking the time out of your very busy day to uh, visit with us and kind of fill us in on what's going on. And uh, we wish you well on your, uh, on your fight. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much. And if folks want to follow along, they can check me out at Beef Magazine or uh, MandaRadke.com. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right. Good stuff. Information. Look it up. Now I feel like I'm going to have a steak. Let's do that. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Got some great information, but I got some more information for you right now, and that's PBR News. PBR. Professional bull riders <sighs> happened. It happens a lot. Yep. Apparently. And what happened was this. The uh, PBRs unleashed the beast U.S. Border Patrol Invitational. Although I don't think the Border Patrol was actually competing. No, that would be kind of fun, though. It would be. It'd be entertaining. Uh, they had a record-setting crowd. It was in Eagle Banks Arena. But Chase Outlaw captured his fourth regular season win of 2019. One of two riders going a perfect three for three. Did you see it? I did not. It was a heck of a ride. You can find it. It's all over the place. On the internet. On the internet. It's on the internet. 85 and a half on uh, round one on Hurricane Test. Round two on Koi Dog with 87 and three whole quarters. And in the final round, he selected a familiar opponent, Big Black. He rode him a few times for 90 and a half. Quarter 91 and a half, 
did it again. 90 and a half with his fifth 90 point ride of the year. Got a check for $38,000. Just 38. Just 38. 562 points towards the world. Right now he's sitting number three in the world standings. Gaining ground on Jose Victor Lemme. I think he's going to win it, though. Jose or Jose or Chase? I think Jose will do it. Well, the season's come, come to a close, so, yeah, yeah he probably does I have think, it now. I think he's going to get it. He only trails him by 1,100 points, a little over 1,100 points. Maybe he can make it up, maybe not. If you're wondering about the top ten, who is sitting in the top ten right now? Who's sitting in the top ten? Number ten, you got Ryan Dirt Eater. Okay, Dirt Eater, yeah. Marco Aguche. Can't say that one. Mm-hmm. Derek Obaba. Can't say that one either. Luciano De Castro. <laughs> no way in hell. Cody Till. Uh, no Cody, okay. Cooper Davis. Yep, no Coop. Joe Al Ricardo Vieira. Nope. Chase Atlaw. Chase. Jess Lockwood. Jesse, little Jess. Number mm-hmm. one, Jose Victor Lemme. And everybody nope. wants to know, just so you, you're, so I don't get 10,000 emails, J.B. Mooney is sitting 27th. But he's injured, right? Yeah. So he's, he's still on top 45. He's still on still top. Well, well, he should be because he's had enough points and everything, but he's yeah. out, so he should be out. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. That's what's going on with that. And if you're wondering about that ride that Daryl was talking about, let's take a look at that uh, championship round ride right here with Chase Outlaw. Here we go. That's what happens when you leave Chase Outlaw Big Black. He's going to go to the lead. He's going to win the round or go to the lead in the go around. I don't care what anybody says. You get the air knocked out of you. Yeah. You're feeling it. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> you feel that. Real, you feel it real good. <laughs> Deep inside. Uh, That's where you feel it. Odd news time. No. Uh, okay. What do you got? <laughs> well, we were talking about goats.com. Don't, don't Google that. Our wonderful producer. Did you go? Did you Google it? I, I haven't yet. I'm, <laughs> I'm really honestly kind of scared. I'm, I'm slightly intimidated. I just might. I'll flip a quarter on it. <laughs> well, former uh, for, uh, Florida. <laughs> See, now I'm all messed up. I, I'm scared to say something. A Florida farm is expecting to bake, break the Guinness <laughs> World Record. Goat got your tongue? Yep. <laughs> goat yoga. Have you ever heard of this? Goat yoga. I've seen something on the internet, but I'm not really sure how it works. Well, it depends. You know, like I said, if you Google goat and yoga, you get mixed reviews. But uh, they're expected to have more than 500 people attempt to break the Guinness Book of World Records with 110 goats down in South Florida. Don't <laughs> ask me why, but it's still open. They're going to try to set this in February. Um, the current record, yoga record, is 351 people and 84 goats. Who decided they want to set that record? That's what I want to know. I, I don't know. But there's a good thing. Um, the record temp is a fundraiser for Global Offensive Against Trafficking. That spells goat. Yes, it is. It's Project Goat. Uh, it opposes human trafficking and sexual exploitation of children. This project is part of the Grady Goat Foundation. A charity founded by the Cans, which are the couple that's actually trying to put this on. Nice. So it has a good cause, so I can see why. And they've already filled all the spots, but they're telling people if they want to come out, just reach them out, contact them, and they can be on the standby list, I guess, to have well, a goat jump on you. Well, I'm guessing since, you know, goat feces is not liquefied, it's just little... It's like Fruity Pebbles. Little, just don't yeah. taste like Fruity Pebbles. Yeah, don't, don't taste those, by the way. But... Uh, I've seen pictures where people have the goats all over them, so I'm guessing. I'm sure that happens. I'll pass. I'll pa- I'm sorry. I just. Mm. I want to. I want to see the video of someone getting a mouthful. That's what I want to say. I'm sure if you Google that, it'll come up. It might be on goat.com. <laughs> goats.com. <laughs> uh, all right, we talked about this. We talked about this uh, previously about these companies that are doing marketing 106, and what they do is. They get really cheap on advertising. Instead of paying 
tons of money on advertising. They put these stories out and pay you nearly nothing to watch movies. So this company is going to be thirteen hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. So for a hundred thousand dollars worth of advertising, they're going to spend thirteen hundred dollars. And I'm thinking about doing this. This is something I'm thinking about doing. Uh, giving somebody a prize, possibly a T-shirt, to go watch binge watch episodes of this nonsense, and then give a report. We would have to pay them. Nope. We definitely would have to pay them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No one's going to do it. Yeah. But it's a good it's a good premise. So anyway, I guess last last previously we were talking about Friends. They were having people go watch Friends right. and binge watch Friends episodes for a certain amount. And that's not hard to do because there's still a huge fan base for Friends. Right. Mm-hmm. So now this company is wanting you to watch 13 movies based on Stephen King stories and document the experience. Hmm. So what are the movies then? Uh, the chosen movies are Carrie. That's Chil- a classic one. Children of the Corn. Uh, that would be kind of scary since I've been out by a lot of cornfields lately. I don't know if I'd really care for that one. What about Christine? Uh, that's a car movie. you got to dig the car movie. What about Creepshow? Eh, Creepshow never bothered me. Cujo? <laughs> There's a big dog. There's a big there. dog over there on the couch <laughs> just staring at us. Okay. We're Dream, good. Dreamcatcher? Never saw that one. It. You know what? And well, is it it? We'll see. There, they can do. Is it the originals or is it like the remakes? I'm guessing it's the original. Because uh, the original, it I don't think is as scary as the remake. It, but then somebody said it too, which I would assume it too is on the list. Uh, Wasn't very it's good to go see. Not on the list. I did. I haven't seen the first it. I did watch it too the other day, and it was boring. It just drug out forever. I didn't know what was going on. Hmm. Uh, the mist. That was a messed up movie, if I recall. Didn't, like, spoiler, doesn't he, like, kill all his entire family and then walk out and it's over or something? Uh, I've never seen that. Yeah, it was right. Yeah, it was yeah. a screwed well, that, up Well, that was the series. The, the actual, like, movie, it was it was similar. But, yeah, yeah. yeah, he, yeah he, kills, he kills his family and then gets rescued by the government right yeah. after. Like Yeah, like five <laughs> minutes later. Golly. So, you know, he's jacked up in the head. Hey, okay. Cemetery? Yeah, I saw that one. I can see that one, yeah. I've seen the new one a while back. It's a little different. Is it? Than the original. Oh, different okay. kid. Really? Yeah. Different animal? Be cool if it was like the cat. But maybe it was a cat. <laughs> it was a cat. It was a cat? It was a cat. There we go. Or a horse. Can you imagine a horse coming back? Oh, that'd be funny. That'd be a heck of a grave. Salem's Lot. Nah. I almost, I almost thought that was Sandlot. I was like a bunch <laughs> of kids hit you with a baseball bat. but okay. I've never seen that. I heard Eminem talk about it once. Uh, what about The Shining and The Thinner? Uh, I never saw The Thinner. The Shining, though, that's a classic. Man, that's kind of hard. Have you ever, you've been to Estes Park, right? Yeah, so you've yeah been we, up stayed the, up, we stayed at the hotel, in the hotel over there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So at least I can go, I walked that hallway. Oh, I remember that staircase. Yeah, you know, that's the only cool thing about yeah, that. Yeah, we did the ghost tour. My wife wrote it for the ghost guide. Did, was he always correcting her? Well, no. She brought the she brought her ghost hunting equipment. And so it shot holes in all their, all their stories. He's like, nope, nothing's going on here. There's nothing here. So I was like, just stop. Just just let just let the guy tell a story. Don't don't run it for him. <laughs> and everybody else that paid to be there yeah. just like shot the pop, yeah. all those bubbles. Yeah. Oh. All right. The winner gets thirteen hundred bucks and will also receive a flashlight, a blanket, popcorn and candy, and a Stephen King prize pack. Probably those thirteen movies on on VHS because he's too cheap to give you DVDs. <laughs> you got to October fifteenth to submit your application. There you go. So get after it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> now let me ask you a question. We're both married men. We've been married for a long, long, long time. Uh, did you ever write love letters to your ex? No. You didn't. No. Because you know what? Well, you would have to write because there was no yeah, there was no internet, internet right? So there was no. Well, we had email. I, I, I still have a Hotmail account from like. 93. There I wasn't believe. even email at that time, I don't think. Maybe it was. Well, anyways, and I, you know, we both probably wrote these letters. A Nebraska apartment, uh, a Nebraska apartment fire sparked by a woman burning love letters. <laughs> now, I, I don't know if she like printed these love letters off. She actually burned her laptop. <laughs> but authorities in Nebraska said firefighters respond to a third floor of an apartment building to put out a blaze caused by a woman bringing love letters from a former lover. I wonder if it was jail mail. Oh. <laughs> that, <laughs> now that would be awesome. <laughs> it takes me back to the old days when 
when Texan was on the show and he was writing those letters to the getting those letters from the women in jail. Remember that? <laughs> uh, I miss Tex. <laughs> so, uh, I guess obviously the woman fell asleep while burning letters. The ashes caught the apartment on fire, caused about four thousand dollars <laughs> with the damages. Uh, the thing is, this girl was nineteen years old. She told the police she was burning letters from an ex and fell asleep. Uh, woke up with the fire alarms going off. <laughs> if you're nineteen years old and you're that upset that a guy actually wrote you a love letter. This guy must have really did something. Or it was prison. He found out be. that he was a she, and yeah. she's on life, life, and he's not getting out next week. Yeah, it's got to be jail mail. It's got to be jail mail. <laughs> we got to get to the bottom of that one. <laughs> it's got to be that. Uh, well, let's talk about this. This is this is going to be interesting. I'm, I'm hoping this happens. I really hope this happens because more than likely they'll film it here in Dallas. So it'll give me another opportunity to uh, run another opportunity on a show filmed in Dallas. <sighs> Everybody's like, what are you talking about? All right, when they filmed Dallas here, and I went down there and talked to, I was on a, a couple of the scenes, and I went and talked to the costume people and asked them about the hats, because the hats weren't right. And then I brought up the fact that in one of the episodes before I was there, they had a round bell ring, a round bell ring out in the pasture. And they had a truck backed up to it, and during the scene, while they're, while they're talking, they're throwing square bells in there. There is nothing wrong with improvising. <laughs> and so, apparently they didn't like that. Constructive criticism is not. But it, you got you got to have it because I'm sure most of y'all watched the ranch, the, the ranch that came out the last season. They jumped the shark. They've jumped the shark on that show. That show's done. They've jumped the shark. It's done with. But there's so many inaccuracies in that dang show that it's ridiculous. Well, yeah, but luckily, this isn't Dallas. This isn't the ranch. <laughs> You're bringing back the man, the myth, the legend. Yeah. Walker. But are they? I don't know. Are they? See, I, this is where I got issues with this. All right, here we go. Ever since Supernatural announced their 15th, upcoming 15th season is going to be the last season, all their fans want to know what's going on. They want to know where Jared Padalecki and, and Jensen Ackles are going to go. And if you saw stuff on my internet thing, my wife and them went to go see that guy at a convention thing they had to go talk to these guys and what's going on with that is jared has joined cbs tv studios the reimagining is that a real word reimagining yeah okay of walker texas ranger but this new project is going to be called walker it's in development phase and it's going to update the original series which aired from 93 to 2001, starring mm-hmm. Chuck Norris as Cordell Walker, member of the Texas Ranger Division. Now, they're saying that, that Jared will take over the role of Cordell Walker, and that's where I have issue. You're not going to be Chuck Norris, but you could be his son. You have a very good point there. You know, like, Chuck is so hard to how, – how can you replace Chuck Norris? You can't do that. It's like replacing Arnold Schwarzenegger as the Terminator. You just you can't do it. It just doesn't work. So more than likely they'll film it here in Dallas. So maybe I'll get an opportunity to go down there and, and wreak havoc on that set too. Uh, the series doesn't have a network. They haven't found a place to air it yet, but it's in the works. He signed on to do it. Apparently that Jared was in Gilmore Girls. I've never seen that, so I don't know what that means. No. But the only issue I have with this is – don't bring him in as – you're not going to replace Walker and be Walker, Texas Ranger. Come in as his son, fresh out of the academy. Ooh. Go from there. Well, see, I think the reason why the you No know, Network wants it is because they don't want to piss Chuck Norris off. Because they know what's going to happen. Yeah. We're losing another network. There you go. Down in flames. <laughs> Down in flames. All right, that wraps up what we got going on. Hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you didn't, that's your own fault because you're still watching. Everything else going on, Farm Ranch TV, Cattle Reports at PepperStewart.com, everything else at PepperStewart.com. While you're there, wander around, look at stuff, buy a T-shirt. Till then, we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>